Brian Chase has been specializing in personal injury litigation for over 20 years. His law firm, Biznar Chase, is located in Newport Beach, California and focuses on all kinds of personal injury cases, including automotive defect cases and pharmaceutical and medical device cases. Biznar Chase litigates cases literally all across the country. Let's meet Brian Chase. Hello, Brian. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks How for are coming you? in. Good, thanks. Please yeah. sit down. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're it. welcome. Tell me, Brian, what motivated you to become a personal injury attorney? You know, when I was filling out my law school application, I put on it um, that I wanted my life's work to have a positive, substantive impact on other people's lives. And I just felt like I've always liked to fight for the underdog. Um, I kind of grew up in the 70s and 80s when we saw the Ford Pinnells blowing up and corporations putting profit over safety and things like that. So I specifically went to law school to do personal injury cases and represent the underdog. And I know what's worked out exactly mm -hmm. as you've planned. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the kind of cases you do. Okay, we do all kinds of cases, all kinds of personal injury cases um, throughout the state of California and also across the country. We also have a special focus on auto defect cases, things that you're seeing in the news right now like the General Motors ignition scandal, the Takata airbag issue. We specialize in those kinds of cases, but we do all kinds of injury cases. If someone's injured due to someone's negligence, we handle those types of cases. And we also have a, a, um, a department now that is doing employment class action cases as well. Well, you know, I, I know you've had numerous seven and actually eight figure verdicts mm -hmm. and settlements. Tell us about uh, one of those cases that really stands out. Yeah, you know, all clients are unique and, and special, and I can talk about so many of them. It's hard to single one out, but if I focus on something that's happened recently that I'm really proud of, we represented this lady who was paralyzed. We got a $24 million and change verdict for her, which was really satisfying. It was able to take care of her forever, so she got all her life's needs, medical needs taken care of. But what really stands out about that and makes it so special now is, after we got the verdict, the auto manufacturer appealed the case. And then we ended up getting the verdict sustained on appeal and reaffirming and sort of changing and clarifying the law in the state of California. So the nice thing about that case and why it stands out so much now is not only did we get justice for that particular client, but the law has now changed in California. And so whether that's on the books for 20 years or 500 years, there are going to be thousands and thousands of people that are going to benefit from that one trial. So it is really special to me. You know, that is really something. As, as you said, you... Uh, you didn't save her life, but you made her life probably livable. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's just you're going to keep seeing the benefits, or everybody's going to keep seeing the benefit for uh, for years. So that, that that really is a special thing. Yeah, it's very gratifying. Very gratifying. Now I understand you're an author yeah. also mm -hmm. and wrote a book about auto defect cases. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, you know, back in the '60s, Ralph Nader wrote a book, Unsafe at Any Speed, and it was kind of one of the first seminal auto defect books. So I followed up on that and wrote a book called Still Unsafe at Any Speed. And I go through all the various types of auto defects that we see on the road today. And you know, my motivation for doing that was really twofold. I wanted lawyers to understand those types of cases and pursue those cases because we need more of us um, taking on the auto industry to make cars safer. Um, but also, and equally importantly, I was finding clients coming to me that had met with an attorney and told they had no case. And I mean, that has happened dozens of times, not just once or twice. And I ended up digging into those cases and oftentimes getting these people several million dollars by way of a settlement or a verdict when they were told by another lawyer that they actually had no case. So I wanted to educate attorneys on one, how to spot these cases, to do it yourself and teach you how to do it. And if you don't want to do it, at least learn the case so you can give proper legal advice to those that are victimized by the auto manufacturer's carelessness. Now, is there anything you'd like to tell our viewers who may be considering hiring a personal injury attorney? Yeah, there's really, there's two things that I really encourage people to look for if they're going to go hire a personal injury attorney uh, and if they're in need of one now, is two things. One is make sure the law firm has the resources. You know, litigation is expensive and you want to make sure the law firm has the financial wherewithal to take the case all the way through to trial if necessary. Biznar Chase has that kind of financial wherewithal and we do it all over the country. Secondly, and equally important is you want to hire a trial lawyer, not a settlement lawyer. So many lawyers are settling cases and they're getting 50 cents on the dollar. 
uh, because they're not trial attorneys. You want to find the law firm where the lawyers are trying cases, the judges know who they are, the insurance companies know who they are, and then if you do settle that case, you're going to get 100 cents on the dollar, not 50 cents on the dollar. And at Bisnard Chase, you know, we're in trials all throughout the year, every year, everybody in the office. So that's very important. Yeah, I was about to say, too, because as you just mentioned, even if you end up settling, mm -hmm. chances are that settlement is going to be much higher because yeah. your opposition knows that if they don't give that fair settlement, it's going to trial and they don't want to do that. So even if you do end up settling, mm -hmm. the fact that you willingly will go to trial yes. helps your clients. And yeah. about the, having the resources, too, it just brings back that that case you mentioned that that it went to trial you you won a verdict eventually then it had to then it was appealed so you you had to stick with it for quite mm -hmm. some time that's all money coming out of your pocket i assume until that that those funds actually reach your client then they they reach you so you you had to support that all the way and if 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 you weren't a substantial firm and you know you would have either had to abandon that case part way through which hurts your client mm -hmm. or encourage that settlement to get that money in that in which case your your client would have yeah. lost money yeah, that, that, that particular case was a three or four year ordeal throughout the whole course, and we had over a million dollars tied up in that. So um, it was, you know, a lot of work, a lot of energy, and just, you know, an amazing woman that we represented. So I'm so happy we got the result for her. And now for everybody else in the state of California, if they ever have that unfortunate situation happen to them. Well, Brian Chase, your contact information is up on the screen. I just Great. wish you much continued success. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sure appreciate you coming in and, and just keep up that good work. Well, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you, being here. I really do. Thank you.